Hello, another great week at Dr. James McConnell's The Small Business Network with co-host Brittany Wise and Carol Harper Poe and our expert practitioner, Carla Murphy. How you guys doing today? Excellent, excellent. Miss Brittany, Miss Carol, how y'all doing? Blessed and highly favored. Miss Ka Miss Carla, how are you doing out there in Buffalo, New York? Wonderfully. That's awesome. That's awesome. Is it cold up there, Miss Carla? Oh yes, it's cold. <laughs> oh yeah, we still we still we we got what fifty degrees out here. We we actually pulled a jacket out today. You know. <laughs> so Miss Carla, be nice. You're the you are expert pack practitioner on the show, and you're you're going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite topics, and that's passion. Y'all know I love turning passions into profits. So why is passion important in business? I want you to tell us, Ms. Carla. Well, thank you, Ms. Brittany. Passion for your work keeps things new and exciting. It keeps you wanting more. Um, people can see your passion and respond to it positively. Passion is one of the most effective motivators when it comes to launching a business. It's it's one of the strongest predictors of whether an idea will lead to success. So launching a business simply to make money most likely will result in failure. How sweet it is. Mm -hmm. so, so how can a business develop passion? As a business, you must identify the types of products, services, and features that your customer is interested in buying. Then determine whether they're likely to buy your product or service more than once or whether they'll buy it on a seasonal basis or if they're likely to be a regular or repeat customer. Um, it's helpful to understand the circumstances that drive your customer to buy, such as the need to replace an item, an impulse purchase, or something that they save for. You also think about what will drive the customer to purchase from you instead of your competitor. I love that. Nice. I mean, that is awesome. So as far as passion uh, on my side of it, and I think I've said this one time earlier, guys, where uh, it's great to have, if you have passion for really what you have, that's the best, mm -hmm. but you don't always have to have passion to make money from something as long as you like it. But uh, how to develop passion, hey, I love, I love that because developing passion can be I want to make money from it. You know, it doesn't have to be the extreme passion, but on the other hand, if you have a passion for it, then you'll turn it into a great craft. So I think that's a hell of a topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ms. Carla, you mentioned um, having a target market and determining when you can sell based on your passion. So who is your target market? When considering your target market, uh, identify the demographics of the consumer who's likely to purchase from you, uh, such as their age, their gender, occupation, maybe their level of education, income, marital status, or ethnic background. This will guide you to ask yourself questions such as, what is your business? Who is your customer? What do they value? And how do you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um I do know at least the libraries out here, they have different programs that you can go into and get databases and figure out the demographics for certain business groups. So and that's a free resource. So use your local library because they, they'll give you a whole lot of information. Absolutely. Um so Miss Carla, what are what is the purchase behavior in a target market? It helps to identify the types of products, services, and features that your customer is interested in buying. You'll be able to understand the circumstances that drive your customer to buy, such as the need to replace an item, an impulse purchase, or something that they save for. Um, having this understanding will force you to think about what will drive customers to purchase from you instead of your competitor. Oh, Absolutely. that's awesome. That is sweet. How sweet it is. Yes. How sweet it is. Awesome. So, okay, we want to get into these four new books that Miss Carol has. Four new books written. Okay. Talk to us about that, Carol Harper Poe. Carol Harper Poe in the house. I just developed or just published a book that just went Kindle right before I got here. Spiritual Warfare, Warfare Deliverance in the word. 
Okay. I just published that. I was up all night. Dr. James, no, I was up all night. I got that one. And the next one is The Life That Overcame the Damaged Life, which is a piggyback off the life of a damaged person. Okay. Also, the story of a misfortune and hardship. And y'all gonna like this one. The Wacky Mirror, Volume 1. So all of those books have been published in the last month. Oh, okay. Man. And on that book, um, don't you have certain uh, uh, pictures in there? Tell me Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. I forgot about <laughs> that. I have certain pictures on Volume 2 that's coming. It's not in Volume 1. Okay. But Dr. Jane's daughter, what, say her name? Garcia, Garcia Parra. Garcia Parra. She is a singer, songwriter, and uh, editor of uh, the videos. She drawed my animals. And they were so beautiful, right? So they are beautiful, but look for those in volume two of The Wacky Mural. Can't so wait. the Carol's Publishing Company published all these books. I, that was the one that I published this morning, The Spiritual Warfare, Deliverance in the Word. That's number 18 of Carol. Okay. Of okay. Carol Harper. Awesome. And uh, Carol's Publishing Company published 17 of those 18 books. Love it. So the new website is uh, uh, cdhboutique.com. Okay. Instead of caroldhopper.com, it's cdhboutique.com. You could uh, look us up on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. Love you it. You can look us up. So I just want everybody for your support in uh, four of my books, actually three, waiting on the fourth one, is on audio. Audio. Okay. They're on audio. And how much are the audio books? Audio books, they run from a special uh, $1.99, or if you got uh, access to uh, audio books, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can get it free. Okay. I got a credit. I have three credits on my account that all I have to do is order a book and I don't have to pay nothing. Of course, awesome. audio books is totally different. So basically, you guys just uh, uh, ask them for your support. Uh, specials, the website and social media. I covered all those and by all means, go check out my website, Carol D. Harper. I mean, Carol D. Harper, Carol D. CDH And awesome. you can shop pillows, jewelry, uh, mugs, all of that. A lot Great. of stuff. All right. A lot of knickknacks. All right. We're going to move on to getting with the times in business. Mm. Tell us about that, Miss Carol. All right. Getting with the time with business is like... Do you follow the norm in business? Okay. Do I follow the norm? I'm asking the question to everyone on the panel. Do you follow the norm? Yes and no. Sometimes it's good to follow, especially when you got entrepreneurs, uh, leaders that are really have done something and they're making it happen and they're doing things. And sometimes the norm is not good. Because right. sometimes it won't work for your business. Right. It's whatever works for your business. But you also have to get input from other people's business to get knowledge and mm -hmm. wisdom. Okay. And is it good to do other businesses and forget about your business? No. It's not good to forget about to do other business and forget about your business because while you're working on other people's business, which is good, mm -hmm. let's keep that, which is good, working with other people and not... Uh, uh, what they call it, a renegade out there by yourself, but you really have to not forget your goal. Why did you start your business? What is your purpose? How are, are you there? Because if you're not working on your business, your business is lacking. Okay, uh -huh. I'd like to touch on that. So as far as that concern, I think it depends on the mindset. And this is what I mean. Okay. I built NBC's list to, to not only build it as a group mm -hmm. for the group, mm -hmm but personally to focus on other people's business Absolutely. to help them grow. Absolutely. So if I was to say, well, I can't focus on that, I need to focus on mine, then I'm not helping them, see? Absolutely. And the blessing comes from that. So what I try to do, and, and you're already a, a understanding, I've helped sell a couple of books Absolutely. for you Absolutely. and audio, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I've also purchased myself. Absolutely. Right? And so the key here is we're always trying to grow uh, as a team. Absolutely. And the only way to grow as a team is to help each other of course, you got to help yourself, too. Absolutely, absolutely. But if we can help others in the growth, I think we'll uh, do pretty good. What do you think, Ms. Brittany? Well, you know, well, my business is everybody else's business. Right, right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. My, my goal is to create 21 new entrepreneurs in 2021. Absolutely. So my business is your business. 
So I, like I want to see other people successful. Excellent. So whatever your business is, whatever passion, Absolutely. like Miss Carla was talking about, whatever passion Absolutely. you have, Absolutely. I'm here to show you how to make it into a business. Absolutely. I love it. So Absolutely. in essence, is it good to do other people's businesses and forget about your business? Well, it depends on your why in your business. Absolutely. If your business is, you know, solopreneur, you know, you selling, you know, jewelry. Right. Then it wouldn't be good to come over here and start selling my stuff when you selling jewelry. You absolutely. Know that? Like, right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So absolutely. yeah, and that, never. Then you become my employee. You right. are no absolutely. longer your own business owner. Absolutely. You are now working for me. Right. As a contractor or as an employee. Right. Um, or yeah, do so. you go with what's best for your company or balance? Do you like to to do balance with your company? Absolutely. It's I, I feel like, uh, do you do what's best for your company? Of course, you're going to do what's best for your company, but you're also going to keep a balance. And to piggyback it off of uh, question two, is it good to do your business? We, we can't forget about why we came into the business. And exactly. it's all about helping other people. Absolutely. It's all about helping people spiritually mm -hmm. and naturally. So we just have to keep a balance. And sometimes you have to take a step back sometimes Absolutely. and regroup. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, let's talk about family. Yeah. Miss Carol, spending time with family, let's touch on that. Well, this is something close to my heart at this moment. Spending time with family is very important. I love that. Very important, especially when you got a lot of, um, like, sickness or something in your family, and then all the family come together. I mean, it, it goes back, you know, you remembering your childhood, and mm -hmm. you guys are talking about... Uh, a lot of things that what y'all did when you grow up. Mama went and made us get that switch. And right. If you don't get the, if you bring a small switch, she, she gonna tell yeah. one of the other ones to right. go get the bigger switch. Uh -oh. right. uh, and then you, back in my childhood, you take right. out running and then daddy have right. you. But right. actually family is good. And, and I had a lot of time to sit back and really think about the importance of family, loving your family, natural family and spiritual mm. family. Well, Absolutely. how about having a balanced life? Okay, having a balanced life, everybody needs a balanced life. But sometimes our life can be unbalanced, okay? With what you call the grind, which mm -hmm. call, we call this thing life, because life gets in the way with trials and tribulations. But somehow or another, you persevere through life itself, and you come back, and you regroup, and you find that balance in life. What about a healthy life? Ooh, -hoo. this is Brittany, right, her. <laughs> so a healthy life is very important, especially when you're busy and you're working and you're doing the business and you're doing this and that. Eating healthy, mm -hmm. sleeping, resting, taking time, exercise is really a good for family life and your business because I always say, if you're not healthy and you're trying to take care of this person, that person, you're a health care giver and you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to survive because your body's going to break down. Well, Ms. Brittany, I know you got something to say on that. Oh, oh. she do. She do. <laughs> well, you know, your health is your wealth. And so yes, it is. Either you're headed towards wellness or you're headed towards illness. Absolutely. Wellness is not a stagnant place. Right. Absolutely. You know, you do, you eat poorly over uh -huh. and over. Mm -hmm. Later on, you'll see the results of that. If Absolutely. you eat well, Later on, you'll see the results of that. And I, I can attest that I've treated 90-year-olds that can run circles around 30-year-olds. Right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so that I do know for sure. Um, but I also, I, I, I heard a millionaire speak years ago. Mm -hmm. And he talked about balancing all aspects of life. And right. he used the analogy of juggling. Right. Mm -hmm. You have four rubber balls mm -hmm. and a glass ball. Okay. And you're trying to juggle all these, you know, keep them up in the air. Okay. Now, four of them, if they drop, they bounce back. Okay. One of them is going to shatter. Absolutely. That one is your family. Right. Okay. That's that. If you drop the ball on family, mm -hmm. then it shatters. It breaks. Absolutely. You destroy it. But your career, your, your work, your, you know, anything else that you're trying to juggle, spiritual life, emotional, mm -hmm. all that, you can juggle it, drop it, it bounce back up, you pick it back up. But a family, mm -hmm. you drop it, it shatters. So... You always want to make sure that you 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 focus on 
keeping that everything afloat. Now I understand sometimes when we do everything, it can be mediocre. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of put, I'm gonna put 10 minutes over here with my kids and then try to do 10 minutes. You tend to have a mediocre life yeah. at some point. So it's just about, you know, my help comes from the East. You know, my, you know, when God is in it with right. you, Absolutely. you get your strength from God. That's, right. that's really and truly what it is. Cause I know some days I'd be hmm. like, I don't even know how I'm getting off this stuff. I love, okay. <laughs> and how I know sweet Dr. It is. James Lord. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So we're gonna change topics here. Let's talk about focus. Okay. Focus. Okay. Miss Brittany, why is focus important in business? <clears throat> well, I mean, we just talked about having all these, you know, it's a whirlwind. Life is a whirlwind. Right. Sometimes if you if you lose track of what you're supposed to be doing or what the purpose is, mm -hmm. it's easily you can easily move here and there and chase this and chase that. Mm -hmm. And you're walking around aimlessly. Right. And Absolutely. as the saying goes, if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. Absolutely. Right. So with focus, like these lights in here, the water just kind of spread out. So it lights the whole room. Absolutely. But when you laser focus that light, mm -hmm. you can cut through metal. Come on now. So focus is vital, especially as far as business goes. Mm -hmm. You gotta have something to focus on so you can start moving forward. And when you move forward, you put that step one step in front of the other, gotta start opening doors for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay. Then you can walk through those doors. But if you don't know what door to go in, all these doors are open. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can't even focus to figure out you go through that door, then you come back out, you go through right. another. Mm -hmm. That's the lack of focus and you never really progress and move forward and you find Absolutely. yourself staying in the same place. Absolutely. So does the people you surround yourself with impact your focus? Oh, Lord. Come on. Birds of a feather fly together. That's right. <laughs> Come That's on right. now. Talk, Come to on. Talk to me. Absolutely. I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, you want to, it's fun to laugh and joke and play. and But when you kind of just walking around in the circle with the Come same on. people who ain't, they Come don't on. have nowhere right. to go. Right. You find yourself easily distracted by that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The drinking, the partying, and, Come you on. know, even not even that. You might just be sitting around and having a tea, ladies tea every week. Come on. But you ain't getting nothing accomplished. Right. And you don't have any goals set. Mm. And you find yourself, you look up, you go from age 30 to age 40, and you're like, okay, where, right. did, where did the 10 years go? Absolutely. So, yeah, the, the people that you surround yourself really impact your focus. They really make a difference in whether you, and how you see yourself as well. Right. So sometimes people will talk down, and we talked about this before on shows, they'll talk down on what it is that you're trying to do mm -hmm. because they don't see themselves mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that will have an impact on you and Absolutely. where you move forward. So sometimes it's good that you got that friend that's always gossip. okay, I know I can only tell her certain things or right. him certain things right. because, okay, I got to come over here and talk to some people who's forward thinking. Absolutely. Right. So that, that makes a big difference. Absolutely. I'm going to piggyback off of that, that number two, does the people you surround yourself impact your focus? I think about, if y'all can recall, when you go back home to certain people, your hometown, and you, you go in your neighborhood, the same people doing the same thing. Right. You went to school with them. You grew up with them. They still around the barrel, drinking mm. and smoking. and. They're, 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 they don't have a focus. That's right. somebody focus is off and they stagnated and they're not really thinking about their life because I think about certain people that's been on a job for 50 years. Right. They comfortable. They're mm -hmm. so comfortable in mm -hmm. that job. They ain't trying to go nowhere. They ain't trying to do nothing. And they want to sit right there and right. not do nothing. Right. So mm -hmm. those type of people are not business focused or business mind and goal minded. For them, it may be a goal. Right but they're not going anywhere. I and like that, that means you outgrow. You're done outgrow your surroundings. Yeah. Am I on it? Yeah. You yeah. outgrow You're your it. surroundings. Absolutely. Mm. So I'm gonna let um, I love it. you guys go yes, ahead. I want to talk about self-reflection, mm -hmm. Miss Brittany. What is <laughs> self-reflection? Well, I get all the heavy topics now. I know, right? uh, <laughs> Self-reflection. So when I think of self-reflection, I think of turning inward and looking at how other people see me. Okay. Okay. So sometimes, you know, my mother used to always tell me, God bless her, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Come on. Right. And for the life of me, I couldn't understand what that meant. Because mm -hmm. I talked to, you know, I'm going to tell you what I need to tell you. Right. I don't need, I'm, I would always be, why well, I got to wrap it up with a pretty bow right. and try to serve it to you. And over time, I learned that, you know, if you speak with tact, mm -hmm. or if you speak to people in a certain way, then you can really get your point across. Right. Absolutely. So that's where self-reflection come in. A lot of times people will say, 
you this, you that, you this, you that. But then they give themselves a pass. Right. You know, they justify their actions. Mm -hmm. They, you know, it's a, it's, what is the scripture? Um, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we self-righteous. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I give myself a pass. Well, I do this because, I do yeah. that because, but I don't show no mercy or mm -hmm. grace to you. Come on. That's where self-reflection comes in. Right. Mm -hmm. You self-reflect, you look at yourself. Okay, how am I coming off? Right. Am I am I received poorly? Okay. Did I say something inappropriate? Did, did they am I triggering them in a way that because I don't I may not know their life. I don't know what triggers right. them right. and Absolutely. what they've been through. I might say a certain word that it mean nothing. Like in my family, we we playfully we say, "Boy, boy, you stupid." You right. know, you know right, how you right, say, right. I, "Well, you crazy." Some people take that as Personally. you calling me stupid, mm -hmm. right, like you know, right, and you know, right. you don't even mean it that way. Absolutely. But that's where self reflection comes in. So, how often should we self reflect? Um, honestly, I would say daily, because um, it's a daily. I mean, you pick up your cross daily, right? Come on. It's a daily walk. It's a daily testimony. It's a daily struggle. And sometimes, if you if you really just walking through life and somebody did this to you and everybody does something to you, mm -hmm. it's time for you to look in the mirror. Come on. Like, what was it, Michael Jackson, I'm right. starting with the man in the mirror. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you got to look at yourself daily and say, okay, how am I presenting today? Because sometimes Absolutely. you might wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Right. You mm -hmm. might be in the mood that's just like, I don't feel like being bothered with y'all. I don't right. deal with these kids. I don't want right, right, right. to go to work today. So you really got to check yourself at the door. And it's right. like, okay, let me check. let me check and see how I'm coming off. Okay. And you can even communicate, today ain't really the day. Okay. Right. I love y'all, but right. not today. I'm not, <laughs> there yet. I'm not today. So, yeah, daily. <laughs> well, let's talk about message. Okay. What is message? All right. So, message for me would be what is, what is your mission? What do you feel you put on earth to do? So, your purpose is God looked at the earth and said, here's a problem. I'm mm -hmm. putting the solution in you. Right. Through that solution, you through that purpose, you come up with a mission. Okay. Your mission, that's your message. Right. What is it that you are here for? And now you present that to the world. So it's kind of like the form, the um, acronym form that we use in business. When we form somebody, we ask them about their family, mm -hmm. their occupation, mm -hmm. their recreation, and their message. How do you develop a good business message? Um, well, you start with determining, like Ms. Carla was talking about, determine your demographics, mm -hmm. you determine um, who you want to target. Right. You determine what the purpose of the business is. Why did I start the business in the first place? Come what on. is it that I'm trying to do? Um, is this in association with my purpose? Come on. Right. Um, and that's really how you form a, a good business message. What you think, Dr. James? I love it. Developing a good business message, it's, it's the thing that you need to convey to your customers. The message that uh, tells them what you do, how you do it, and uh, how you're going to help them. What's in it for them? What's in mm -hmm. it for the customer? So I think having a good business message is absolutely pertinent to the cause. Mm -hmm. I just want to piggyback off of that. Being in a publisher is a totally different mindset. Mm -hmm. I try to get a message across to help them, no matter what they're going through in life, there is a way out. Absolutely. Because a lot of people feel like they're stuck. And that's why I write my books. I have a passion. that I can write my passion. That is my passion. I can do it for free, but mm -hmm. we don't want to do it for free. The right. money will come. Mm -hmm. But my message is to help others endure their trials and their tribulations in their life. So that is my passion uh, to develop a good business message because everybody business is uh, it has different goals and ideas to help other people. I love it. Love it. Love nice. It. Okay. How sweet it is. How sweet it is. All right. Home based businesses ideas. How to become a freelancer, Dr. James. Okay. Uh, let's say if you want to be a freelancer, and that's more in your realm because you like to write, like I love to write it. books. Yeah. Well. Freelancers normally work for themselves, and you'll be able to um, uh, go and uh, apply for other people to use to use your services. Absolutely. So anyone that's trying to start a business, that's one thing that you can do uh, is to be a freelancer uh, and do certain writing or uh, whatever, 
a resume or whatever for mm -hmm. some other customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can almost, you can even freelance dancing too. Absolutely. I, mm -hmm. um, I used to work with a couple of dance companies. When I had my dance business, I would freelance dance work. Mm -hmm. And I actually partnered with a DJ Mm -hmm. And he paid me to be his party starter. <laughs> so, right. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can freelance. Okay. And Dr. Jen, I'm thinking about you also, your business, like, mm -hmm. you like freelance, you can help other employees, your, your employees. Right. Teach them the way and the idea on how to do something, like how to make a phone call, how to interact with your customers, mm -hmm. how to present yourself. So all those things are tied into your entrepreneur spirit that you have mm -hmm. so it. like the freelancer right and I know you do do it you freelance Absolutely. you don't let nobody know but right, you do right. freelance every mm -hmm. now and then what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get ready to tell the viewers um, how to reach us right okay, okay. so for anyone that wanting to uh, grow your own business or make more money or mm -hmm. both uh, give Dr. James a call uh, I'm founder and CEO of NBC Global Enterprises. You can call me at 469-765-5327. Again, that's 469-765-5327. And if you're just looking to make more money, we can help you with that in different things as money systems, making money online, making money from your cell phone, uh, real estate investing, stock market trading, so on and so forth. If you're a business, we can help you get featured a lot of different places, uh, so on and so forth. So give me a call and let me know if you need our services. How about you, Ms. Brittany? So I am the founder and director of operations for Legacy Services. Um, my goal is to create 21 new entrepreneurs in 2021. So if you're thinking about starting a business, you don't know where to start, I give you a blueprint, help you with your website. Um, and even if you have a nonprofit, I'm working with nonprofits, for profits, whatever it is that you're trying to do, your passion, I'll show you how to make it into a profit. You can call me at 214-774-7503 or you can reach me at LegacyServices.com, L-E-G-A-C-I Services.com. How about you, Ms. Carol? All right. Uh, Carol's Publishing Company. You can reach me on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitter Instagram. And my website, cdhbatik.com. Uh, uh, you can call me at 469-643-6498. And also, if you're looking for someone to edit, publish your, or uh, just look at your book or your writings, or you need a pillow and edit it, hit me up. All right, that is it. This was another great show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll see you next week on Dr. James McConnell's The Small Business Network.